Good morning, church. Saturday morning. Got up with good faith to do an interview. But things happened that the interview didn't go off. No love lost because that's what we do. We do interviews try to bring the community into the things that's going on. Go to my prayer book. Praying is no easy task. Hold on a second, sorry. Uh, added electronics to my sermons. from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 how to recognize God's best blessing Webster defines blessed as of or enjoying happiness successfully enjoying the bliss of heaven it carries the idea of that which brings pressure, contentment, or good fortune. Simply stated, it is that state of being that we all want to enjoy. We, we all like blessing, blessings, don't we? There isn't a person in this room that does not enjoy a blessing. And certainly, we are a blessed people. But church, when it comes to this matter of blessings, we often view them in the wrong light. Most often, we think of blessings as being those things that are physical and material in nature. For instance, if everyone in our household is well, we consider ourselves blessed. If there's money in the bank and the bills are paid, we say we are blessed. If we are living in a nice home and driving a good car, we equate that with blessing. 
And I would have to agree that those things are blessings from the Lord. However, what happens when a loved one is stricken with a dead disease? Did we cease to be blessed? What happens when we drive junk cars and our house is falling apart? Do we lose the blessing of God? What happens, church, when there is no money and we can't pay the bills? Does that mean that someone, somehow, the Lord has stopped blessing us? The answer is no. Our problem is we tend to look at the blessings in regard of how they benefit us materially. And certainly God does bless that way. We, what we fail to remember, church, is that these kind of blessings are temporarily at best. That car will die one day. That money will find a place to be spent. That home will rot and decay. Your health will eventually decline. What we need to know is that the real blessings of the Lord are not material or physical. The real blessings of God are spiritual in nature. And these spiritual blessings will never be taken away from us. Even when everything else is gone, has uh, broken down, or has been spent, we will still possess the best of good of God blessings. There are three little thoughts in the last part of this verse that teaches us the valuable lessons how to recognize God's best blessings. I would like to point those out to you this evening. Now, by the way of introduction, notice how this verse uh, begins. It begins with a note of praise for the Lord. Paul exalts the Lord for his greatness. He tells us that our Heavenly Father had blessed us. I want you to notice that those words are in the Asher text which is equivalent to the English past tense. At some point in the past, God blessed us. Not only are uh, they are past tense, but they are also in the active voice. This means that those blessings that we receive at some point in the past continue this evening and will continue on into the future. In other words, I have been blessed. I am, ble I am being blessed and will be blessed. It may not feel like it, and all the facts may be stricken against it, uh, stuck against it, being true, but it is true nevertheless. Well, if I have these great blessings, I want to know more about them, don't you? Thankfully, this verse and those that follow it in the chapter give us the information we seek. Let's notice these truths as we discover how to recognize God's best blessings. The quality of these spiritual blessings, a quality of those spiritual blessings can be summed up in one little word found in verse 3. It is the word all. That word tells us that in the Lord we find every single thing we need to live the Christian life. You see, church, God has held nothing back from his children. When he saved us, he gave us everything we need to serve him. We have everything we need right now to be content, to be successful to be obedient, to be useful to the kingdom, and to be happy in Jesus. When you and I got saved, <clears throat> we got everything Jesus had to offer us. 
We got it at that very moment. There's nothing else. The quality of these spiritual blessings. Paul described these things as blessings in heavenly places. This means, literally means that these blessings are things that originate in heaven. They are not earthly blessings, but they are heavenly blessings. In the most literal sense, they are heavenly thoughts. What with that in mind, it will help us all to learn just what these heavenly things are. We are told in verse 4 to 14. We speak of for knowledge. This verse deals with the matter of election. For some reason, God, in his wisdom, chose me before the world was formed. He knew me before he formed me in my mother's womb, and he had already determined that I would be in his family. I cannot explain elections and all the ramifications of the church, but I am still going to rejoice in it. One of the greatest spiritual blessings we enjoy as saved people is the fact that we were chosen in Christ by grace of God, by the grace of God. Romans chapter 8 verse uh, 28 to 31. We love, he loved me even though he knew all about me. What a blessing. He speaks of family. This verse tells us that we were adopted into the family of God. That is, at the moment of salvation, you and I have become the children of God. First John chapter 3, verse 2. We are the sons and daughters with all the rights and privileges that come to any child born into the family. Romans chapter 8, verse 7. Uh, the father brought me into his family and made me his child. What a blessing. He speaks of favor. This verse, six, verse 6, he speaks of favor. This verse reminds us that we are accepted by the Father. When we received Jesus, we were uh, uh, reconsidered of the Lord. Uh, there was a time when we were outcasts and aliens, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. But now, in Jesus we are approved by the Father. We have been brought near to him by the blood of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. We used to be on God's hit list, so to speak. But now we are on, now we are on his. List of favorites, church. Don't that feel good? That you on the Lord's list of favors. <laughs> this means that God is literally pleased with us. A lot of Christians waste a lot of time trying to do what Jesus did when he died on the cross. Please the Father. The Father is pleased with me because I wear the righteousness of Christ. What a blessing. Freedom. This verse tells us that we have been redeemed. There are There are three Greek words in the New Testament that are translated redeemed. This particular one means to release a captive after the payment of a ransom price. It carries the idea of purchasing a slave and then immediately turning that slave loose. Church. This is what Jesus did for us. He paid the price. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18 and 19. John chapter 19 verse 30 and then he set us free Luke chapter 8 verse 18 Jesus died for me saved me 
by his grace and delivered me from the captivity of sin. What a blessing. Forgiveness. This verse goes, verse 7, forget, this verse goes on to tell us that we have received forgiveness of our sin. I don't know about you, church, but that means something to me. I was a wretched man when Jesus saved me, but at the instant of salvation, every single sin in my past, my present, and my future was forever forgiven. Psalms 103, 12, Isaiah 38, 17, Isaiah 43, 25, Jeremiah 50, 20, Malachi 7, 19, Colossians 2, verse 13 to 14, 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. We have been forgiven of all our sins. What a blessing. Future. Verse 11 and 14. <clears throat> speaks of three more spiritual blessings that manifest themselves as we go through life into the future. Our destination. This verse speaks of our heavenly home. Every child of God has a has a home waiting in heaven. John chapter 14 verse 1 to 3. This home is glorious beyond compare. Revelations chapter 21 verse 4, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 4. We have a home in glory land. What a blessing. Our consecration. This verse refers to the new manner in which we are to live our lives after we come to know the Lord Jesus our, as our Savior. The fact is we are changed by salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. An experience that does not produce change both inwardly and outwardly is not a valid, a valid salvation experience. When he saves us, he begins the process of making us more like him. He gives us life and enables us to live a, lot, a new life. What a blessing our preservation. These verses remind us that when we were saved, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. He is the earnest money. He, he, he is the earnest money. This means that he is the down payment that secure us for eternity. The Holy Spirit is the Lord's promise that what he began at the moment of salvation he will continue until we are home in heaven Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12 if you are saved church you are sealed if you are sealed you are secure John 10 28 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 5 if you are secure then you can rest and enjoy in that truth thank God in Jesus and Jesus we are saved to the utmost Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 what a blessing in Jesus the qualifications for these spiritual blessings the last words of verse 3 tells us what a person must do to enjoy all these spiritual blessings. The one thing is to be in Christ. The only way to ignore to anyone to enjoy the spiritual blessings of the Lord is for that person to be saved by the grace of God. At the moment of conversion, you are placed into the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. You get in Christ. When the happy of, you are made a partaker of all the spiritual blessings of the Lord. 
Are you in Jesus this evening? Or you ask, how can I, how can I know preachers? The answer is found in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 to 2, 13. Does this describe you? If so, then rejoice, for, for you are blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ. If not, you can be saved by coming to Jesus by faith and by receiving him into your heart and life. Then you can begin to enjoy all the Lord has to offer. In the conclusion, church, when you and I look at the blessings from the Lord's perspective, I think we would all have to say this evening that we are indeed blessed. God has provided us with blessings that are beyond description and beyond measures as, their, as to their value. I think we I think we just need to learn to praise the Lord for his blessings. We need to learn that what we often think of as blessing really aren't. Too often the real blessings of life are those spiritual things that we always have. No matter what else is happening around us. The real blessings of life are the things that never change and never fade away. We are blessed no matter what else is happening. If you are saved, you are blessed abundantly. I think we ought to thank him for those blessings. Yes, we should. Dedication, this prayer, the power prayer book. Dedication of the temple. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the praying offer in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. Second uh, Chronicles chapter 7 verse 15, 17. The prayer of Sodom at the at the prayer of Solomon at the dedication of the temple is the product of inspired wisdom and piety. And it gives a large and powerful view of prayer, national calamities, sins, damage to crops as well as individual needs such as sickness, pain, and one's own sin are in this prayer. For all these things, prayer is the one universal remedy, prayer to God. Pure prayer relieves dire situations because God can relieve when no one else can. Nothing is too difficult for God. Almighty God, thank you that I know you can do all things and that you can relieve all the troubles in my life. I only have to pray earnestly to you in Jesus' name. If this message, church, have been a blessing to you, Find yourself a Bible-based church and become a part of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, let the church say, Amen.